Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and everybody praise the Lord. Welcome to In Heavenly Places with yours truly, Elder Mark S. Brantley, and I'm glad that you are taking the time out to be with us to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. And as I always mention, I hope that you had a wonderful and blessed morning and afternoon wherever you decided uh, to go for your house of worship. Uh, or whether you were uh, in your home enjoying a message earlier via uh, YouTube or Facebook, however you worshiped on today, I hope it was a blessed one. And again, as I always encourage uh, everyone to find a local assembly, a house of God, a place to worship. Amen. Uh, it's good for the people of God to come to church together and to worship in the beauty of holiness. Yes, it's okay to uh, find a service virtually, but don't forget uh, to gather together the assembly of, our, of yourself uh, with the other people of God, because there is something to corporate worship. Amen. Having uh, the spirit move in a mighty way. As you know, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that they were all on one accord in one place. Now, I know there was no such thing as cyberspace or Facebook or Instagram, uh, but nevertheless, they were all in one place on one accord. And as a result of that, the Holy Spirit came and those 120 plus and those that were around in Jerusalem during the Feast of Pentecost, they were blessed. Amen. They received the gift of the Holy Ghost, the promise that God uh, spoke through the prophet Joel. This is that which the prophet Joel spoke of. Amen. But I'm glad that you're here tonight. Um, my encouraging you to find a local assembly. I don't want you to forget in heavenly places. I want you to tune in. Amen. This is kind of the, the nightcap on your worship 
in uh, the morning or in the afternoon. So I'm glad that you're here. I appreciate your support. All those that hit that share button, you can do so even now. You can hit the share button and this uh, message can go out live, amen, in real time. And for those that uh, do send uh, offerings uh, uh, via mail or via cash app, um, I appreciate you as well. Thank God for you, because every time I hear or see your comments, amen, or receive mail from you or receive a love gift, that is a symbol, uh, a token of encouragement. And uh, to let me know that uh, you're listening and being blessed by the word of God. Amen. Now, um, I missed you on last uh, week. I was traveling. As a matter of fact, um, I was out in the southeast. Amen. And uh, I thank God for his traveling mercies, bringing um, my family and myself home safely. But now I'm here to bring us another message from the word of God. And we're going to continue our message from two Sundays ago. Amen. Where uh, we preach from a particular topic called God's threshing floor. But before we get into the message, I would like you to turn with me to First Chronicles chapter 21. That is the scripture that we're coming from. First Chronicles chapter 21 in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to commence reading at verse 18. And the Bible reads accordingly. Then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. And David went up at the saying of Gad, which he spake in the name of the Lord, and Ornan turned back and saw the angel and his four sons with him hid themselves. Now Ornan was threshing wheat. And as David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David and went out of the threshing floor and bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, grant me this place of this threshing floor that I may build an altar thereon unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it me for the full price that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Ornan said unto David, Take it to thee, and let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for burnt offerings, and the threshing instruments for wood, and the wheat for the meat offering, I give it all. And King David said to Ornan, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price, for I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. So David gave to Ornan for the place six hundred shekels of gold by weight, and David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called upon the Lord, and he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you, we praise you. Oh God, we magnify your name. There is none like you, Father. You are God and God alone. Oh God, you sit high and you look low. Oh God, you see and care for your people. Oh God, we thank you for the love you bestowed upon us. Oh God, for your word says you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You are indeed a heavenly father. You are our everlasting Father. You are the great I am. And we worship you on tonight. Hallelujah. We glorify you tonight. We worship you, O oh God, for you're worthy of the praise. Now, Father, bless your people on tonight. O oh God, send a word, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh, forgive us of our sins. Hide us behind the cross of Calvary. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, bring us into the presence by the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Have your way, oh God. Let your spirit move in a mighty way. Heal the sick, oh God. Oh God, give joy to the depressed soul. Oh God, loose every chain, destroy every yoke, bind every evil force. Satan, we come against you in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus in your name, Lord God. Have your way. Oh, we'll give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 
Looking at verse 18, which is the first verse of what we just read, the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. And as I mentioned, um, I'm continuing my message from a couple of Sundays ago. This is God's threshing floor, part two. God's threshing floor, part two. Now, um, the reason why it's a continuation of the previous message is because I only went um, to a certain extent in talking about God's threshing floor. And as I mentioned uh, on the previous occasion, uh, this is a subject matter that's not often taught or preached about, but it has relevance for the believer. It's important for us to know uh, that the threshing floor is a place where uh, grain is processed. And as I mentioned in Israel, uh, because we, uh, or rather Israel is, is and was an agricultural society, God often spoke uh, in his word to the things that are agricultural in nature. When he spoke, Jesus spoke of the sower of seeds and how it felt on different grounds, good ground, thorny ground, stony ground. Uh, that was in an agricultural context. When Jesus uttered the seven great I am's, he said that he is the door of the sheep hole, which has agricultural meaning and context. He said, I am the good shepherd. Uh, which is also agricultural in nature. Uh, I am the true vine. So all of these have agricultural context because Israel was uh, agriculturally inclined. There were, there were farmers. Uh, everyone owned uh, a piece of land. Uh, and if they didn't own it, they rented it. Amen. And uh, they raised flocks and they grow their, grew their crops. And that's how they sustained themselves. That's how they made their living. So when Jesus or in the New Testament or God in the Old Testament had his people, his prophets, write uh, the Holy Scriptures, they have agricultural themes. And the threshing floor is one such thing that's not just mentioned here in First Chronicles 21, but the threshing floor is mentioned about 17 times total uh, in uh, the scriptures. And uh, God speaks to us this way um, because uh, when you look at Genesis 1, we also see that God created uh, times and seasons. Amen. And the seasons were connected uh, to harvest, to seed time and to harvest. And when we look at the word seasons in the first chapter of Genesis, the word that's used is moed, which means the appointed time. So God, even before man was created, he established times and seasons. Why? Because God's plan was already determined before the dry land appeared. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. And that's why John indicates in his first chapter, starting out that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. And the word in verse 14 of chapter one, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, which in essence, it's the divine will, the plan of God that was executed by the word who is Jesus Christ manifested in God manifested in the flesh through his person uh, his son Jesus Christ so God operates in times and seasons and he created time not just for um, uh, us but for him to operate on our behalf uh, 
Amen. Times and seasons. And God created seasons and time when he put the sun and the moon in the sky and the stars and the constellations uh, were also uh, indications of seasons. Farmers would look to the heavens to see certain constellations and knew that the raining season was approaching. And as a result, they would plant their crops ahead of time in expectation of the rain, a man watering their seed, and eventually there would be a harvest. Now, when we talked last time, we mentioned that there were primarily four major crops that the word of God brings our attention to. And when it comes to the threshing floor, we look at the barley crop, or grain, and also wheat. And those two crops have very um, important significance when it comes, amen, to the ministry of Jesus Christ and to the salvation of us being believers. Amen. And I just want you to, amen, uh, just Put that in your in in your short term memory for the time being, because we're going to get to that when we talk about barley and wheat, amen. And then the other two crops uh, are olives and grapes. Now, when we're speaking of the fleshing the threshing floor, we're speaking of barley and wheat because those are grains. When you're talking of the other two crops, which uh, they are harvested in the fall. The barley and wheat is harvested in the springtime. The olives and the grapes are fall harvest, and they are not processed on uh, the threshing floor, but they are processed through presses. Amen. Grapes to get wine is put through a wine press. Olives to get olive oil are put through an olive press. But we're not talking about the presses because the presses have to do with God's wrath and judgment. Amen. Uh, when it speaks about God treading the wine press, amen, and how people uh, who've rejected Jesus Christ will miss the rapture and will be in the tribulation period. Now, the word tribulation um, is thelipsis, which is the Greek word for oppressing. Uh, so those that are in the tribulation period, you will not be, your process will not be on the threshing floor, but your process will be in a press. And it depends who you are, where you will be pressed. Now, for those that reject Jesus, they will be pressed like grapes. Now, remember the Jews that reject Jesus because of the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they will also go through a press, but they will not go through the wine press, which wine, when you Amen. Press grapes, it comes out as blood. And that wine press is God's wrath on mankind during the tribulation period. But when it comes to the Jewish nation and God fulfilling his covenant, because Jesus has to reign over a people, right? He's going to rule over Israel. The church is going to reign with Christ, but there will be Jews, the Jewish nation, that will come through this olive press, amen, and as a result, they will be pressed so, amen, that the olive oil, amen, will come forth, and we know the olive oil uh, is symbolic of the anointing. Amen. God processing olives and the olive trees. And I, I don't have time to go into that uh, in terms of the presses. That's another message. Uh, but when Israel comes through the olive press, amen, after the two witnesses shake the olive trees and the olives will fall, there will also be a sickle. And I believe it's in Revelation chapter uh, 12 or 11, rather, where there are two angels in here. I'm going there anyhow. Amen. That will thrust in their sickles. One will be Jesus will be thrusting his sickle into the remainder of the olive trees to gather the last of the olives. Because in Revelation 13, the Antichrist is going to be the abomination that make it desolate. 
And you know what Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 24, he told uh, the disciples when it comes to, when you see the abomination that make it desolate, meaning the antichrist setting himself up in the temple being God, Jesus said, it's time to run to the mountains. He said, don't even come back for your pocketbook. He said, don't even come back to get a bottle of water. He said, if you're on the rooftop, you need to run from roof to roof and make your way to the mountains because time will be short. Why? Because Satan will be kicked out of heaven one more time, out of the heavens, that is. There's more than one heaven. And he will possess the Antichrist and the devil knows his time is short before he's bound with a chain and thrown in the bottomless pit. So he's going to go after Israel with a fury. And this is that olive press. Amen. And out of the olive press, there will be a spirit of supplication when Israel will see Jesus coming in the clouds and they will then believe on him and be saved. Oh, hallelujah. But that is, those are the presses. Those take place in the fall harvest. Amen. That's after the tribulation. What I'll focus on is the threshing floor, which is the process of a harvest, but it's a grain harvest that takes part in the spring. Now, if you've been watching me, you know that I often refer to the seven feasts of the Lord. And in those feasts, it gives us a roadmap of the appointed times. Because in Leviticus chapter 23, the word feast, moed, is the same moed, which means seasons. So in essence, if you put the phrase, the feasts of the Lord, and replace it with the appointed time, which is the interpretation of the Hebrew word moed, you would come out with come up with the appointed times of the Lord. And when we look at those appointed times, we see that God has already fulfilled the four feasts or the appointed times of the Lord, the spring harvest, right? Because those four spring feasts uh, uh, are Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and the Feast of Pentecost. And then you have the summer age, amen, which is the age of the church. And we'll talk about that in a little while. And then after the church age, you have the blowing of trumpets, which in my belief and opinion, my opinion, uh, is a type of rapture where the Lord shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first and those that are alive and remaining shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And that begins the fulfillment of the feast of trumpets, which is in the fall. And that's when we leave the threshing floor. And now God in his appointed time is going to be dealing with the presses because he's going to be dealing with the nation of Israel in that period of tribulation, which in the Greek again is the lipsis, which means a great pressing. Amen. So there in the fall, you have the Feast of Trumpets, you have the Day of Atonement, and you have the Feast of Tabernacles. Oh, glory be to God. But if we look at the spring harvest, because these appointed times are seasons, and they're associated, amen, with the grain that is uh, reaped and harvested. Oh, hallelujah. And as I mentioned, barley and wheat, is the predominant spring harvest. And if we look at Second Chronicles chapter two, we even see here where Hiram is talking to David and he says, now therefore the wheat and the barley, the oil and the wine, which my Lord has spoken of, let him send unto his servants. Now this was Hiram of Tyre who was hired by King David to build the house of the Lord. Now, what's going to be interesting is that David promised these grains and oils and wine to Hiram as part of his commission to create and construct the house of God.
Now, David didn't build it, his son Solomon did, but David made the preparation. As a matter of fact, if you read our text later, you will see that the threshing floor that David purchased becomes the house of God. So that's why when we look at these four major crops, it has to do with the house of the Lord. Are you with me? Can I preach like I teach? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're looking at uh, barley, wheat, olives, and grapes, where you get wine when it comes with the grapes, and you get olive oil or the holy anointing oil from the olives. Amen. When they're pressed. And then also let's look at Revelation 6 verse 6. It says, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now, this is during the tribulation period. And here the instructions are given to the angels, amen, that there's going to be a famine concerning the barley and the wheat, but don't hurt the oil and the wine. And that has significance what we talked about going through the press. So I just read those two scriptures to let us, to let you know of, about these four crops that the scriptures uh, emphasize. Amen. So when we look at barley and when we look at wheat, these are grains that are processed on the threshing floor. They're processed on a smooth pavement, pavement that can be enclosed, but is usually outside because when the wheat is threshed, the farmer waits for a cool, breezy evening to do it. And we'll get into why that's the case. <laughs> Oh, glory, hallelujah. So when it comes to uh, the threshing floor, this is how the grain is processed after it's harvested. Now, when we look in the book of Ruth, the third chapter, verse two, the Bible says, now is, is not Boaz of our kindred with whose maidens thou was? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. So here, Naomi had gave good advice, good counsel. Amen. That's why it's important, you know, for our mothers to help guide our younger women, to give them good, sound advice. Amen. And she advised her daughter-in-law, go and see Boaz, because you found favor in his sight, and he is your near kinsman. And she was obedient and hearkened to the voice of Naomi. And when she went to see Boaz, Ruth was told that he's in on the threshing floor. And what is he threshing? He's threshing barley. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Now, remember, we're talking during spring harvest, the barley harvest and the wheat, because barley is first. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm feeling my help coming. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Now, it was usually the first of the harvest in the spring of those two crops. And when we look at the story of Ruth, it's not just a love story, but Ruth is about a story of redemption through love. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Oh, there should be a name that comes to your mind right away when we're talking about redemption and we're talking about love. Oh, hallelujah. We're talking about the appointed times of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. So here, Amen. Ruth went to meet Boaz on the threshing floor and he was threshing barley. In other words, he was putting the barley through a process whereby the wheat or the rather the grain uh, is separated from the unwanted parts, namely the stem of the plant or the stalk of the plant. Uh, and then also the husk or the chaff. And typically a threshing floor, when you process it, it's violent. Amen. There's a beating of it. If you owned uh, cattle, then you had oxen 
to tread upon uh, the grain, to separate it from the unwanted parts so that you can gather up the grain for its purpose and use. And it's a violent process. And usually oxen would use depending on the economic station of the farmer. Now, in the Bible, in the book of Leviticus, uh, God even gave a commandment to say, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that does what? Treadeth out the corn. Now, corn was used in that instance because there were other crops in Israel. There was corn, there was pomegranates, uh, there are figs. So there were other crops, but the major ones associated with the times and the seasons or the appointed times of the Lord are focused on barley, wheat, olives, and grapes. And we're talking about barley and wheat. So here on the threshing floor, Boaz was processing the barley. And now the barley is associated, amen, at this time with the redemption of Ruth because Boaz was the near kinsman. But he told Ruth, I can't marry you right now until I take care of business according to the word of God according to the law of Moses. Why? Because there was a nearer kinsman, amen, that was closer in relationship. And that kinsman had the right to redeem Ruth. So he told Ruth, just be patient a little while. Amen. And we ought to be patient. Amen. If we're single. Amen. I know we want to get married. And I know we want to do things in a rush and in a hurry. But you want to be led of God. Amen. God is not the author of confusion. He wants us to do things in decency and in order. And that's what Boaz was telling Ruth. I need to do things according to God's word. So let me handle my business. Amen. Which is God's business. Hallelujah. Because God wouldn't have given us these laws unless he wanted us to obey them. And that's what Boaz did. And when he went to his nearest kinsman, his Eric Kinsman forfeited his right because he said, I got enough people to raise. I got enough people to take care of. So you go ahead, Boaz. You got the wherewithal to take care, amen, of Ruth. So you go redeem her, amen. And that's what Boaz did. He redeemed Ruth, amen, being the nearest kinsman. That's why Ruth is a story of redemption, amen, and it's associated, amen, with the barley harvest of the threshing floor. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I said that barley is the first, amen, harvest, and it comes before, amen, the harvesting of the wheat. Now, when it comes to the feast of the Lord, we mentioned Passover, unleavened bread, and the feast of first fruits. Now, when it comes to the feast of first fruits, the farmer is supposed to take the best of his harvest and bring it to the temple and present it as an offering before the Lord. And that's why it's called the Feast of First Fruits. Now, guess what is the grain that is part of the first fruit harvest? Amen. On the Feast of First Fruits. It's barley. And I just said that barley, amen, is associated with redemption and that Jesus is associated with redemption. And we also know that Jesus died on Passover and he was buried on unleavened bread. But on the third day, Sunday morning, he was resurrected, declaring all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. So in other words, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is about the redemption of who? His people, which is us. Oh, glory, hallelujah, amen. And Jesus, when he resurrected on that Sunday morning, that was the feast of first fruits, the fulfillment of the appointed time because Jesus is what Paul said. He said he is the first fruits 
of them that slept. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, it says, because in chapter 15, Paul is talking about the resurrection. Now in verse 20, he says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So even Paul knew, amen, that the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the feast of first fruits was the fulfillment of that appointed time. Amen. And the redemption plan, the appointed time for man to be redeemed. And Jesus rose on the feast of first fruits, amen, to represent those who would be in their glorified bodies, Jesus being the first, amen, of the harvest. Because the barley is the first of the major crops, glory, hallelujah, that is harvested. Amen. Now put that Amen. In, in, in your memory there. Amen. Because that has relevance. Because now, after the Feast of First Fruits, after seven weeks, seven Sabbaths, or 49 days, we get to the Feast of Pentecost. Oh, hallelujah. Now, Pentecost, amen, there is also the process of gathering the first fruits of the wheat harvest, not the barley. Jesus is the first fruits of them that slept. And therefore he's offered, amen, and was presented before God when he went into a tabernacle not made with hands. Oh, hallelujah, because Jesus is the first to rise in his glorified body. And those that rose with him, amen, they had to die again. But there are those that he preached to in Abraham's bosom and into the other parts of hell, amen, where the Bible says he let captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now they also represent the barley harvest, but they are not the first fruits of them that slept in that Jesus is the first fruits, the first to be in his glorified body. But they were resurrected with Jesus, but they're in their spiritual bodies waiting for the wheat harvest. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The first fruits of the wheat harvest. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So now when we turn to the Feast of Pentecost, which is 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits, we see that the farmer had to gather the wheat. Amen. And the wheat was then presented before the priests in the temple. Oh, hallelujah. Are you with me? Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to unpack this. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So on the feast of Pentecost, we know that Jesus had already promised before he ascended to send the comforter. He said, I would not have you comfortless. And he told the disciples, I want you to wait in Jerusalem until you endued with power from on high. Amen. Because Jesus knew about the appointed time. He knew that he was sending the Holy Ghost. Amen. On the feast of Pentecost. Now there's also another type and shadow when it came to Moses receiving the law. Because scholars believe that on Pentecost, amen, in the Old Testament, that Moses was on Mount Sinai and he received the Ten Commandments. Amen. And there was a quake and a smoke and furnace and God came down upon the mountain like a fire. But that was a type and shadow, amen, of the Old Covenant. But on Pentecost, it was a fire. <laughs> But there was a mighty wind blowing. Oh, hallelujah. For the Bible says they were all on one accord and in one place. And it wasn't a law written on tablets, but it was the fulfillment of what Jeremiah said, that God will write his laws in our minds and in our hearts. Amen. So it's a different kind of fire. Amen. Yes, God is a consuming fire. When he came down to Moses and gave him the law. Amen. And the Lord is a mighty fire burning in our souls. For the Bible says that the Holy Ghost, amen, filled each of them and appeared to them like cloven tongues as a fire. Amen. Have you ever been burned? Oh, hallelujah. I have. 
path. Amen. Amen. And all you got to do is come to Arizona if you want to get burned and all you can say is hot, 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 hot. Amen. You be speaking in tongues before you know it. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. But I thank God. Amen. For all his many blessings, whether it's the cold or the hot. Amen. I thank him for the seasons. Amen. I thank him for the winter, just like I thank him for the summer, because God is a good God. God is a gracious God. And here we see that on the day of Pentecost, it was another appointed time that was fulfilled. And it had to do with the wheat harvest. Oh, yes, Lord. Because the barley harvest had to do with the redemption. Amen. And then the feast of Pentecost has to do with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Filling us. Amen. And giving us regeneration. So the barley is redemption and the wheat is regeneration, making us a new creature. For if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Now, when God sent the Holy Spirit, now, it was the birth of the church. Now, it was the fulfillment of the wheat harvest. Now, and that's why Jesus said, now, let the wheat and the tears, now, let them grow together. Now, because there'll come a day now, that I'll do the separating. Now, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come now and when the Holy Ghost came now and filled them speaking in other tongues now as the Spirit of God gave the utterance now that same day now the Bible said thousands now were filled with the Holy Ghost now and was brought into the church now that is the wheat harvest now, that's why Paul speaks about him. Now, but if the spirit, now, or rather he speaks, now, that we are the first fruits, now, of the spirit. Now, because remember the wheat harvest, now, on the feast of Pentecost, now, has to do with the wheat harvest. Now, and if you have the Holy Ghost, now, you are the first fruits, now, not of those that slept, now, but you're the first fruits now, of the Spirit. Now, you are the wheat now, that God is harvesting, now, and the Lord is still harvesting now, all of the wheat. Now, those that are saved now, are harvested wheat. Now, and when God harvests his wheat, now, he has to bring us to a process. Now, he brings us to the threshing floor. Now, now I remember now, now, I mentioned the threshing floor. Now, is a violent process. Now, where the oxen is treading on it. Now, mashing the grain. Now, separating it. Now, from the unwanted parts. Now, and if you couldn't afford an ox, now, then you would get a big stick. Now, and you would beat the wheat now until the grain separates. Now, God has us now as wheat now on his threshing floor now separating us now from all the world now separating us now from ungodly folk now separating us now from so called friends now separating us now from God. Now, whoremongers, now, adulterers, now, he's beating, now, the chaff away, now, he's preparing us, now, through his process, now, that's found on the threshing floor, now, hang in there, now, stay on the threshing floor, now, it gets painful sometimes, now, it gets difficult sometimes, now, but I heard, now, the Bible say, now, if you suffer with Christ, now, you'll reign with him. Now, trust the process. Now, he's making you better. Now, 
Now, he's making improvements. Now, as part of your sanctification. Now, for the sufferings of this present time. Now, can't be. Now, compared to the glory. Now, that shall be revealed. Now, when we all. Now, get to heaven. Now, what a day of rejoicing. Now, it shall be. Now, when we all. Now, see Jesus. Now, we shall sing. Now, we shall shout. Now, the victory. Now, John said, now, beloved. Now, now we are the sons of God. Now, and it does not yet appear. Now, what we shall be. Now, but one thing we know. Now, one thing. Now, one thing. Now, when he shall appear. Now, we shall. Now, be like him. Now, for we shall see him now like he is now but you gotta be processed now on the threshing floor now and you can't get to the threshing floor now until you are weak now and you can't be weak now until you go through Pentecost now redemption through Passover now redemption through unleavened bread now redemption through first fruit now, which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, redemption. Now, appointed time. Now, but after that, now, you got to come through Pentecost. Now, for regeneration. Now, made a new creature. Now, you're no longer a tear. Now, a weed. Now, taking up space. Now, in the earth. Now, you take in the sun. Now, you take all the nutrients now out of the ground now but you don't produce nothing now but when you become wheat now you are a producer now you turn into wheat now for the master's use now but you got to be processed now now trust the process now a loaf of wheat now looks nothing like now the wheat that comes now out of the ground now it has to be processed now and it's done now on the threshing floor now god has a process now let him process you now let him improve you now let him shape you now let him mold you now he might allow the devil now to tread over you now he might allow the devil now to beat you down now but god said now i'll never leave you now i'll never forsake you now but i'll be with you now until the end of the age now trust the process now he's gonna bring us through now after a while now so when the grain now gets separated now from the stem or the stalk now and some of the chaff is removed now the farmer now takes a big fork now it's called a widow now and when he takes the fork now he digs it into the wheat now picks up the wheat now throws it into the air now that's why paul said now but of the spirit of him now that raised up jesus from the dead now dwell in you now he that raised up christ from the dead now so also quicken now your mortal bodies now by his spirit now that dwelleth in you now so the barley harvest now was the resurrection of jesus now redemption now but the wheat harvest now the holy ghost now raise us up now and it's quicken us now with the same spirit now that rose jesus from the dead now quickens our mortal bodies now paul also says now that the spirit of god now raises us up together now and quickens 
lead us now to sit in heavenly places now in Christ Jesus now so when the farmer now takes the winnow now lifts up the wheat now he lifts it into the air now in heavenly places now and the cool breeze now that God blows now from his nostrils now hit the wheat now and the wheat now it's too heavy to blow away now but the chaff now that unwanted chaff now that stubborn chaff now that flesh chaff now that disobedient chaff now that sinful chaff now that backbiting chaff now it wants to now hang around now but when the wind blows now it's too light to stick now and the holy ghost now blows it away now and only the wheat grain now remains now and falls to the ground now trust the process now let the lord now lift you up now after you are persecuted now after you tread on now after you beat upon him now after you lied on him now remember now they did it to jesus now on the threshing floor now remember the threshing floor now is the house of god now later on now when solomon builds it now the same threshing floor now in our text today now and jesus now went to that threshing floor now which was the temple now in jerusalem now with the pharisees now and the the Sadducees now smote Jesus now on his face now the barley now was being processed now the barley now symbolizing now Jesus redemption now of us now he was beaten now on the threshing floor now of the barley harvest now in the temple now Isaiah said now he was wounded now for our transgressions now bruised now for our iniquities now the chastisement now of our peace is upon him now and by his stripes now you didn't hear me now his stripes now we are healed now Jesus was smitten now tread upon him now on the barley now threshing floor now for our redemption now our salvation now and if he can do it now the power of the holy ghost now can give you grace now to go through the wheat threshing floor now stay in there now don't go in the towel now the trumpets now are ready to sound now it will be time now with the wheat now will be separated now from the tears now, now glory hallelujah now go through the process now on the threshing floor now hallelujah now i'm running out of time now but i need somebody now to say hallelujah now i need somebody now to say glory now i need somebody now to say thank you jesus Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. I wish I had more time. I might have to do part three. Hallelujah. Because I didn't even get to my text. Oh, hallelujah. When David buys the threshing floor of order. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. He buys it. Because David sinned against God. Hallelujah. You see, God will process us on the threshing floor. Even when we sin and are disobedient, he will process us. Get rid of the unwanted parts. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
We got to trust the process. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stay on the threshing floor. I know it gets hard sometimes. Hallelujah. But the trumpet will sound. We're in the summertime, which is the church age. That is when the winnowing is done in the evening. After the spring harvest is passed, which is Pentecost, and the harvest is brought in, then during the summer, there's the winnowing. Well, Brother Bradley, how do you know that? Well, if you look at Daniel chapter 2, it speaks, amen, of the summer threshing floors, which is in Daniel 2 verse 35. The summer threshing floors. Glory be to God. So the winnowing takes place in the summertime where it's tossed into the air in heavenly places. And then the power of the Holy Ghost, which is like the wind, begins to remove the hurt parts. Hallelujah. The beaten parts. It quickens you. It begins to refresh you. It begins to regenerate you. Follow the process. <laughs> Trust the process. Is for your good. For all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. Do you love the Lord? Then it's for your good. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name. We give you glory and honor. Lord, we thank you for what's been said and done. We thank you for your word, a light unto our path, a lamp unto our feet. We, Lord, will hide your word, your eternal word in our hearts that we may not sin against thee. Oh God, let us meditate on your word day and night, that we may be like that tree planted by the rivers of water, giving fruit in its due season. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, have your way with your people. Help us to trust your process. Help us to stay on the threshing floor. Lord, you are with us. You are allowing this to happen because it's your process. This is your appointed time and season. Father, be with us, Lord, as we begin our weeks, our week, rather. Father, even if it's on our job in our homes, wherever we might find ourselves being and doing. Father, we ask that you give us restful sleep tonight. Bless as only you can. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. It looks like we're going to do a continuation of this part three so I can get to my text. I touched off on it a little bit, but I want to talk about David and why he purchased the threshing floor from on in the Jebusite and that later became the house of God. Hallelujah. It was a threshing floor where the house of God even standing today, is situated. Hallelujah. But we're on a threshing floor, not made with hands. Amen. God's threshing floor. Amen. Hope to see you on next Sunday. God willing, please hit that share button. That's the primary way to partner with this ministry. And if you want to give monetarily, you can through the cash app that's in the video description. If you want to write me, you can in Heavenly Places with Elder Marcus Brantley. That's 975 East Riggs Road, R-I-G-G-S Road Suite 12-170. And that's Chandler, Arizona, 85249. Amen. Well, bless you again. Hope to see you on next Sunday in Heavenly Places with Elder Mark S. Brantley. Shalom. Shalom. I will sing unto thee. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, yes, Lord. 